Just over a hundred years ago, on the 22nd of May 1921, a young corporal in the 3rd South African Infantry Regiment died. What distinguished him from the other soldiers was that he was a Chakma baboon. The baboon named Jackie was found as an infant by Albert Marr on the family small holding in Villiaria, now a suburb of Pretoria on the southern side of the Magaliesburg. Jackie had probably been orphaned by bounty hunters who were paid by the Transvaal government to shoot baboons raiding crops in the Moot Valley. Albert took the young baboon home and he was raised as a member of the family, much like a human child. Soon afterward, Jackie and Albert became inseparable. With the outbreak of World War I, Albert Marr, along with many other young South African men, volunteered for military service. Marr was mobilised on the 25th of August 1915 at Potchefstroom and given the rank of private. He was allocated to the 3rd Transvaal Regiment of the 1st South African Infantry Brigade, a brigade which was earmarked to fight in France. Distraught at the thought of leaving Jackie behind, Private Marr figured it would be a great idea if his pet baboon could come along with him. So he approached his superiors and rather surprisingly got their permission. At first Jackie's presence was generally ignored, but he was so well behaved and had such an impressive bearing that he soon stuck out and the troops took notice of him. In a short time, Jackie was officially adopted by all as the mascot of the 3rd South African Infantry Regiment. Today most people would be appalled at the thought of taking an animal to war, but until quite recently many regiments had animal mascots. Dogs, goats, horses, a springbok and a kangaroo led their troops in ceremonial parades in the First World War, and many accompanied their regiments onto the battlefield. Jackie was one of those, because of his attachment to Private Albert Marr and because of a baboon's remarkable ability to imitate and learn. Jackie led the life of a full-time soldier. At the training camp in Potchefstroom, he drilled with the men, carried a wooden rifle, learned to salute an officer, and he was reputed to take meals using proper army plates and cutlery. After training, he was officially enlisted as a private and issued with a military identity number, paybook, ration card, and a specially fitted uniform and cap, complete with regimental brass insignia. Jackie would also entertain the men, and such entertainment would prove invaluable in the months to come as a morale booster, especially to relieve the boredom caused by the stalemate of trench warfare once the 1st South African Infantry Brigade and the Transvaal Regiment reached France. Jackie wore his uniform with some panache. He was also known to light up a cigarette or pipe for his fellow soldiers. He also had a sharp salute for any officer passing him. He would stand at ease when commanded to do so placing his feet apart and hands behind his back in the military style. At the mess table, he used a knife and fork, as well as a teacup in the proper manner. On the battlefields of Europe, Albert Marr and Jackie made for an odd pairing. Absolutely inseparable, and for all intents and purposes, they became the best of friends. The two of them first saw action during the Senussi campaign. The Senussi were a religious sect resident in Libya and Egypt, who were allied to the Ottoman and German Empire. In the summer of 1915, the Ottomans persuaded the Grand Senussi, Ahmed Sharif S. Senussi, to declare jihad and attack British-occupied Egypt. The 1st South African Infantry Brigade, along with other British forces, were dispatched to Egypt to put an end to the Senussi jihadi uprising. At the Battle of Agagia on the 26th of February 1916, whilst fighting the Senussi, Private Albert Marr was shot and wounded in the shoulder. While waiting for the stretcher bearers to arrive, a distraught Jackie became desperate to do something to comfort Private Marr as he lay on the ground, so he went about licking the wound. By this simple action of trying to comfort a fallen comrade, Jackie became more than just an animal mascot and a pet in the eyes of the men in the regiment. He had now become a fellow comrade. Albert Marr recovered from his wound and rejoined his regiment. Both Albert and Jackie then spent three years on and off on the front line that was the Western Front in Europe, fighting in the mud and blood of the trenches in France and Flanders. Jackie was even reported to have gone over the top with the rest of the 3rd South African Infantry Regiment during the heavy fighting in which they were engaged. His sharper animal instincts proved highly valuable at night 
when on guard duty with Albert. He was extremely useful because of his keen eyesight and acute hearing. He would give an early warning of enemy movement or an impending attack by barking or tugging on Private Mars Tunic. Up until now, he and Albert had come through the war in Europe relatively unscathed, but in April 1918, that all changed. Nearing the end of the war, the 1st South African Infantry Brigade found itself being heavily shelled as they withdrew to Renninghelst in Belgium during the Battle of Passchendaele. To try and protect himself, Jackie was seen to be frantically trying to build a wall of stones around himself as a rudimentary cover from shell fragments and shrapnel which were bursting all around him. He never properly completed his protective wall and a jagged piece of shrapnel wounded him in the arm and another nearly severed his leg. At first, Jackie refused to be evacuated by the stretcher bearers. Instead, he tried vainly to continue building his protective wall, hobbling around in excruciating pain on what had once been his leg, held in place by just sinew. What happens next is best described in the words of Lieutenant Colonel Oren Woodsent of the Royal Medical Corps, who was the attending doctor. It was a pathetic sight. The little fellow, carried by his keeper, lay moaning in pain. The man crying his eyes out in sympathy and shouting, You must do something for him. He saved my life in Egypt. He nursed me through dysentery. The baboon was badly wounded, the left leg hanging with shreds of muscle, another jagged wound in the right arm. We decided to give the patient chloroform and dress his wounds. If he died under the anaesthetic, perhaps it would be the best thing. As I had never given an anaesthetic to such a patient before, I thought it would be the most likely result. However, he lapped up the chloroform as if it had been whiskey and was well under in a remarkably short time. It was a simple matter to amputate the leg with scissors and I cleaned the wounds and dressed them as well as I could. He came around as quickly as he went under. The problem then was what to do with him. This was soon settled by his keeper who said, quote, He is on army strength, end quote. So, duly labelled, number, name, ATS injection, nature of injuries, etc. He was taken to the road and sent by a passing ambulance to the casualty clearing station. It was unknown if the chloroform and the operation would kill Jackie, but funnily, it was reported that when the officer commanding the regiment went to check up on him at the casualty clearing station, Jackie sat up in bed and saluted him. It was the end of active service for both Private Marr and Private Jackie. The war ended shortly afterward on the 11th of November 1918. They were both shipped to England where Jackie immediately became a media celebrity in the English newspapers. Jackie's proudest moment in London was to participate in the Lord Mayor's Day procession. The featured image shows Jackie and Albert Marr in this parade. From early September to the 14th of February 1919, Jackie and Private Marr were lent to the Red Cross by the War Office and the South African government for the purpose of collecting money for sick and wounded soldiers. They managed to collect a huge amount of money for the Widows and Orphans Fund by allowing the public to pay half a crown to shake Jackie by the hand and five shillings to kiss the baboon. Back in South Africa, Jackie was officially discharged at Maitland Dispersal Camp in Cape Town on the 26th of April 1919. A proper war veteran now, on his sleeve, Jackie wore one gold wound stripe and three blue service chevrons, indicating three years of frontline service. At Maitland, Jackie received his official discharge papers a military pension, plus a civil employment form for discharged soldiers. By the 5th of May 1919, both Jackie and Albert were on their last leg of their journey home to their cherished family farm near Pretoria. After their arrival home, Jackie was again fussed over and became the centre of attention. He was front and forward on his official welcome home parade and again led the homecoming victory parade of the 1st South African Infantry Brigade and again he was present at the Peace Parade in Church Square, Pretoria on the 31st of July 1920 where he proudly received the Pretoria Citizen Service Medal. Albert Marr and Jackie returned to their family farm to recover from shell shock, post-traumatic stress syndrome, but the fragile state Jackie was in from the terrors of war tragically killed him on the 22nd of May 1921. 
During an unusually intense thunderstorm, he suffered a heart attack when an intense thunderclap went off close by. A sad end to one of South Africa's most remarkable mascots. He was mourned and much missed, especially by his friend, comrade and close companion, Albert Marr, who went on to live a long life and passed away at the age of 84 in Pretoria in August of 1973.